As we get closer to the end of the story, Vegeta and Goku continue growing, but they're still affecting those around them. And a lot of that could be seen within the Tournament of Power. So how is that arc supposed to conclude since we never actually finished it? We'll be showing all that and more in this part 11 of What If Vegeta Hit His Head. Goku slowly walks over to where Vegeta and Jiren are, and his body moves on command. Vegeta knows exactly what this is. It's what he just got, and he knows it's powerful, but he knows the downsides of it. The two of them are clearly untrained with this. He's amazed and happy that Goku has it, but he also knows it's fleeting. Goku immediately launches in to fight Jiren, and Vegeta needs to think quickly. There's not much he can do because that really wore him out, and he tries to find shelter somewhere. He watches as Goku clashes with Jiren, and while Jiren has to show a little bit more of his power, he already saw how Vegeta fights, and he's slightly above where Goku is. He fights Omen Goku, but Goku of course ends up losing. He doesn't know where Vegeta went, but these two are definitely liabilities. Goku lays there on the ground injured. Jiren considers knocking him out, and Vegeta watches nearby, ready to scoop up Goku and run away with him. But Jiren surprisingly just leaves him there to rest, and he yells out to Vegeta too. He expects to face them again, once they're fully ready to, and Vegeta comes up from where he's hiding, picking Goku up and walking away with him. The two need to recover for a bit, and also, try and figure out what just happened. They both got the same power. Of course, Goku's way more beat up. His catalyst for Ultra Instinct was much more severe. Goku thinks they should just let the others take over for now while they rest. Vegeta wonders if maybe fusion would work, but Goku says it's too risky. The new power they have could activate while fused, and just drain them even further. If they can't control individually, and that activates while they're fused, that's gonna really drain a lot of their power. It might even kill them. Plus, if they somehow get eliminated while fused, Jiren's gonna get two eliminations for one. It's much less risky to try to tap into that power again, but individually, rather than together. More fights continue on around the ring. Universe 6 isn't really an issue. The Saiyans there never got Super Saiyan, even though they saw it, but they were never taught how to do it. Kaba never learned it, and the other two didn't either. They're actually defeated relatively easily, but Hit is still kind of a problem. He's definitely the strongest on the team by a pretty significant margin, and he faces Nappa, Raditz, and Granola. But they heard about this guy before the tournament. Goku and Vegeta told them. So, they know what he's capable of, and they know what to look out for. But Granola especially knows what to look out for. His sharp vision allows him to see subtle movements with Hit, picking up on when he's about to attack, and trying to figure out ways to actually counter it. The three battle together to hold him off, but Granola actually performs the best against him, and Hit's surprised. He wonders if Granola's an assassin too. And he isn't, but he's using very similar techniques. It's like he knows the best way to attack. He knows how to hit people in their vital points. Granted, Hit's control on time is definitely a huge factor here, keeping him ahead of the other three, at least individually. Combined though, they're able to actually take him out of the ring. Meanwhile, at some other place in the ring, the same man duo claims victory over the Pride Troopers, but realizes that Jiren is still an issue, and they kinda wanna fight against him too, especially because Goku and Vegeta are resting now. They need to actually step in and help their fathers. Goten of course wants to try the same too, and he's holding his own well here, fighting pretty decently alongside Gohan and Trunks, but also joins Krillin and Ten from time to time. Gohan and Trunks think of what they should do, and they are able to find where Goku and Vegeta are resting. They don't give away their location. They actually try to hide the two of them under some rocks, and they just stay in that general area, defending against any threats. They'll basically be bodyguards for now. Although, they notice something else. There still are some other pride troopers left. Not just Jiren, but Topo's there, and he's facing Nappa's crew now. They're actually having a tough time against him. Even with their combined powers and Granola's abilities, it still is kinda tough. They were kinda able to work around Hit because they knew what to look for, and they already had info on him, but this guy they have no info on. Their combined strength at least holds him off, but the same men then jump in to fight him too. It's a 5v1. Topo does hold his own pretty well, but is defeated. Although there is a mutual respect between him and the two Saiyamen, since they recognize each other as superheroes. Raditz and Nappa are kinda amazed at the power of these two Saiyans, considering they're not even really using godly forms. And Raditz chuckles as he nudges Nappa. That's his nephew right there. Well, it's kinda late to be claiming that because Raditz barely cared about him before. He tells Raditz he sure waited a while to acknowledge that. More and more people get eliminated, and they need to do something about Jiren. Raditz and Nappa want to see Goku and Vegeta fight with those powers again. They're definitely the best chance that the group has against Jiren but they still need a little bit more time to recover. But Gohan and Trunks have an idea. They could lend power to Goku and Vegeta. It would mean that they wouldn't have power to fight themselves, but at least will help them get back up. And they're about to do so, but Nappa stops them. They should save their power. Use it for something else. Nappa turns to Raditz. He says they don't really have much strength left to fight, but their power is unique. They have godly key. Maybe if they lend power to Goku and Vegeta, that would really be a big help. While the three hybrid Saiyans could try to figure out something else to do, and get Granola's help as well. The humans have already been eliminated, and now Raditz and Nappa are at a low power. This might mean that they're eliminated next, but at least gets Goku and Vegeta back in. And now with less people in the ring, Jiren doesn't really have much else to do. He can stand there and wait for them, but he kinda needs to fight them now. So Gohan and Trunks say that they'll buy some time. As Jiren walks over to the group, Gohan and Trunks assume a weird stance. They tell Nappa and Raditz to go over to Goku and Vegeta, as the two of them perform fusion. Zeno watches on with amazement. Two fighters combining to one? That's awesome! Raditz, Nappa, and Granola are just as amazed but Goten says he's seen them do this before. It's a fusion technique that they learn from their fathers. So Nappa and Raditz rush over to where Goku and Vegeta are hiding. As Jiren stands there, looking at the light that's created from the fusion. A new warrior stands there, 
This is the first time that he's appeared in battle. He already does have a name for himself though, but he still needs some sort of introduction so they know what to call him. His name is Gohonks. The fusion of Gohan and Trunks. Gohonks looks back over to where Nappa and Raditz are. They're already giving away their energy. Gohonks thinks he could fight alongside Goten, but has no clue how Granola fights. He expects them to provide support though. They need to buy as much time as possible. And it's a pretty daunting task, but whatever. They don't really have a choice. Goten powers up to his maximum, and so does Granola. As Gohonks tries to pace himself, if he uses too much power right now, it'll run out the fusion. But he knows he's gonna have to crank it up a notch soon. Goku and Vegeta feel a burst of power. They feel that god energy flowing through them from Raditz and Nappa. The two of them basically drain whatever reserves of power they have left. They're not gonna be able to fight anymore, but they know this energy will be better in their hands. And Vegeta's amazed to see this. He gets energy from Nappa, while Goku gets his from Raditz. Vegeta can't believe how much they've turned around. The old them wouldn't have done this at all. Not just when they were together as a crew, but when Vegeta first came to Earth. I mean, they tried to kill them before, and now they're saving them. It's a selfless maneuver. It really shows how much they've changed. But Raditz tells them not to get the wrong idea. They just know this energy will be better in their hands. That's their best shot at surviving here. They haven't gone soft like Vegeta. And Goku laughs at this. He definitely can see they've changed a bit, but thanks them for that strength. And they could already sense the fusion fighting, assuming that Gohan and Trunks have fused, and that's exactly what happened. Goku and Vegeta feel like they know how to tap into that power again. It's gonna be tough, and it's no guarantee that it's gonna work. But they gotta empty their mind, be completely calm. That's the way to tap into it again. Their body has to move automatically. But still, even with the power from Raditz and Nappa, it might not be enough. That first fight wore them out so much. And even though together they've been able to discuss it and try and work on it again, still, they might need a little bit more power to make it work. They power up into Super Saiyan God, launching in to fight Jiren with Gohonks. And Gohonks is glad to see them back in here. But Jiren is showing more and more of his strength. Gohonks needs to power up as well. Showing his full power in Super Saiyan 3. Goku and Vegeta have powered up, breaking through their limits, but they still need a little bit more. Gohonks asks if they could use that ability again that they just had, but they're not sure. They need more power, and then maybe with that strength, they'll be able to tap into it once more. And Gohonks asks, are they sure it will work? Well, they can't really be sure they only used it once. But the two of them both know how it felt. They know the principles of it, and they know what they're trying to get. They just gotta look at what's consistent between the two of them and figure out what was there, and they found out what they needed to unlock it. Since it's not just one person doing it, they're able to figure out the consistent factors between the two of them. So, there's a slight chance they can make it work. And that's good enough for Gohonks. He begins charging power, while also attacking Jiren. His attacks get weaker though, he's not putting all of his power into it. While the other four fight alongside him, Granola keeps his distance, while Goten just provides support, wondering what Gohonks is doing too. And then Gohonks has charged enough power. If he tries to charge any longer, he's gonna lose it all. And quickly, he sticks two hands out, with each aimed at Goku and Vegeta. He emits a massive plume of power from both, and then immediately defusing right after. He granted all of his energy to them, and Gohan and Trunks weakly get up. Trunks says that should be enough power to fuel them. And Goku and Vegeta, they're overflowing with strength. Now they have so much more. Jiren tells them it's a noble effort, but it's not going to do anything, immediately knocking Gohan and Trunks out of the ring, with them having no way to defend themselves. But then he turns back to Goku and Vegeta. The two of them have their eyes closed. They look peaceful. They're breathing calmly. A subtle aura swirls up around them, and Granola notices something weird about them. Their final points completely disappear. They could tell Jiren's strong. He hasn't even shown up his full strength yet. But this right here, this is the key to defeating him. The aura completely flares up, that same Ultra Instinct aura from before. They're so much more powerful than before as well. And together, the two of them open their eyes, both using Ultra Instinct only. No more words are exchanged, just attacks. And Jiren has no choice now. They've grown so much stronger, he needs to go into his full power. The two of them have a better grasp on the form, using attacks now too. And they're actually more potent, but it still might not be enough. Raditz and Nappa are still in the ring. Of course, they're not able to fight, but they are still there. Granola and Goten go up to them, watching everything happen. They take out whatever scragglers are left in the ring. And now it's really just them and Jiren. Vegeta and Goku try to keep access to Ultra Instinct, and they know exactly what they need to do. Don't consciously think about it. Keep calm. Those are the keys to it. Amidst the fight, Vegeta closes his eyes, fighting without even looking. He and Goku fight with perfect synergy, and Jiren's having a really tough time fending them off now. He can't believe they broke their limits this much. But something begins changing with Vegeta too. His aura seems more intense. And the flames bit, they coat Vegeta's hair. As then starts glowing, it's no longer black, there's a burst of energy, and the hair turns silver. For a brief moment, Vegeta taps into the complete Ultra Instinct, standing back to back with Goku, with the two not even thinking about it. Automatically, each of them charges a Kamehameha, launching the combined attack at Jiren, knocking them fully out of the ring. And immediately after that attack, the two of them drop back into their base form, exhausted. Vegeta looks over at Goku, giving a thumbs up, with Goku returning it. They did it. They won the tournament. Vegeta's the MVP, wishing for the universe to be restored. And just like that, the tournament's concluded. The two of them want to figure out how to access that power at will, though. But the two of them thinking about it together and knowing the same principles of it, it could really help them fully tap into it later on. And while they're focused on that, Raz and Nappa have kind of a different focus. There's that other Saiyan that Whis mentioned. They kind of want to find him. 
and of course, Tarbell eventually. So after the tournament, they figure out where that other Saiyan is located and go to seek him out. Granola goes with them too, wondering if it's going to be dangerous because this guy's a Saiyan that's been completely secluded from the others for so long. Maybe he is like the old Saiyans, but Raditz and Nap aren't worried. I mean, if he is like the old Saiyans, that's not going to be a problem. They could easily fight him. This does lead them to Planet Vampa, where they find two other Saiyans, Paragus and Broly. And Paragus almost has Broly attack them, but he doesn't know who two of them are. He does recognize Nappa though. He's one of the higher ranking Saiyans, and that's someone that Paragus would have a grudge against. But before he attacks Nappa, he does inquire. What happened with Vegeta? What, the king, the planet, or his son? Any of them. Paragus gets the rundown on what happened, realizing that Vegeta's alive. At least, the prince is. That angers him to no end, but he's gotta bite his tongue for now. He wants to be brought to Vegeta. And that's exactly what Nappa and Raditz wanted. They want to bring him back to Earth. But Granola notes something strange about that other Saiyan, Broly. He analyzes him, and something about him is off. His anatomy, his vital points. Something's different about him than the other Saiyans. Why are these Saiyans here in the first place? They all arrive back on Earth, meeting Vegeta and Goku there. And this immediately causes problems because Paragus sticks Broly on Vegeta right away, with Vegeta having no clue what's going on. Although, this fight isn't really going to last too long. Broly shows some of his amazing power, especially boosted by his anger. But at some point, it's pretty clear that he's losing control, and Paragus just decides to shock him. The battle's going to be lost anyways, and he can't believe they failed that quickly. Vegeta and Goku still have no clue of what's going on here. Vegeta did notice the Saiyan seemed different than the others. It was almost like he was mindless when he was attacking, and then he was electrocuted. Why? He has the same reaction to Broly that Goku did in the actual movie, and Paragus knows he's already screwed. These Saiyans are too strong. Even one of them could take on Broly, judging by Vegeta's fight. The other Saiyans and Granola surround Paragus, intimidating him almost. What's really going on here? Vegeta picks Broly up and brings him over to the others, dropping him on the ground and hearing more about who Paragus is. Paragus isn't buying Vegeta's act. Apparently they say he's good now, but he doesn't care. It doesn't seem like it, and Vegeta has no clue of who he is. He barely remembers anything about his planet anyways. Raditz and Nappa are really the only ones who remember what planet Vegeta was like, and they learn more about Broly's rage as well. And Vegeta says they should be thankful being on this planet. He doesn't know why he has any quarrel with Vegeta, especially because it was something that his father did. Vegeta's not that person anymore, and there's no reason for Paragus to actually be like that with him. And as Broly wakes up, he sees Vegeta standing over him. Vegeta reaches for Broly's neck, with Broly thinking he's about to be attacked, but that collar is just ripped off of him. Paragus calls Vegeta an idiot. Why would he do that? They can't control Broly. His power's too dangerous. That's the only way to control it. And Vegeta says he's interested in seeing Broly's full strength. And he looks over at Goku with a confident smirk. If he does have a power that's truly that dangerous, they'll figure out a way to control it. Not by electrocuting him or whatever. They're actually going to have him harness it. Goku tells Paragus they could stay here as long as they don't cause trouble. They already lost once, and he expects they won't act up again. Of course, Goku and Vegeta would be glad to fight if they do. But he says it's probably not worth the risk for Paragus now, especially since they can't control Broly's strength. It's not a bad deal. They get to stay here, and they get to control Broly's power. All Goku and Vegeta ask is that they don't try and kill them. Of course, Paragus is infuriated, and Broly doesn't really know what to think. So, they just mull on it for a bit. But they do stay here because, where else are they going to go? It's especially interesting to Goku and Vegeta because they wonder if Broly's strength is correlated with that one form they had before, that Wrathful form. They haven't really used it too much, at least in recent times. But maybe that's somehow tied to his rage. They're not too sure, though. There's another brief passage of time. And next, we have the Moro arc. Although it ends pretty quickly. The two of them arrive on Namek a little bit later, but Moro still hasn't made his wish. A fight ensues with Goku being the first one to fight Moro, and he loses energy. But Vegeta then steps in. He knows a good way to fight Moro and get around the energy absorption. He then powers up into Ultra Instinct Omen. They have a control on this. Not the complete Ultra Instinct, but this should be enough. And maybe, in a battle like this, it'll be the perfect way to win. Maris can't believe what he's seeing, and asks Goku if that's what he thinks it is. Yep, it's Ultra Instinct. But how does he know about it? He's just a random Galactic Patrol guy. Vegeta effectively uses it and defeats Moro. Basically like Goku did when he fought Moro, also using Ultra Instinct. Except here, Moro is still very weakened. And Vegeta has access to Omen earlier on. That makes the fight pretty easy. Of course, Moro does try his best to escape, leading to his defeat by Vegeta's hand. And you know, it's kind of strange now that I think about it. So this place is the home of Kami. They never actually went to Namek. Although they've known for a while that Kami is a Namekian. And they know that Namekians make Dragon Balls because Granola also had the same thing happen with him. It's just strange being here for the first time. What an interesting place. It's a good thing they were able to save it. But now, there's not really much else to cover. The Granola arc obviously wouldn't happen. That's been completely avoided. And in all honesty, as for Superhero, it's too short to get its own part here, and it's going to be too long to cover in this part. Goku and Vegeta would also probably stay on Earth, since they have no reason to bring Broly to Beerus' planet, and that would mean the Red Ribbon Army has some pretty big resistance, because most likely they'd be facing off against Goku, Vegeta, Broly, Gohan, and Trunks, as well as Goten who's probably grown a lot stronger too. And they don't have much data on Goku and Vegeta recently either, since, well, a lot of their Ultra Instinct training took place on Beerus' planet. In short, basically, the Gambos would probably be defeated easily, and Cell Max would never be awoken. And that's one of the many huge examples here of how much has changed. Given how different Vegeta is here, that affects so many people around him. 
We have a much larger crew of protagonists here. Radis and Nappa, who would have been dead otherwise, they're here as part of it. Despite being former enemies, now they're allies again. There's Granola, who's more connected with the group, and also he has most of his life left because he didn't get it cut off by the dragon. Gohan and Trunks, two best friends that have grown up so much stronger. Even the humans have changed, getting new motivations. You have Krillin, for example, being so driven by Vegeta, with the Yamcha and Ten even benefiting from it due to the events with Turles and all. And you have Broly here on Earth, with Paragus surviving as well. All this here because Vegeta is a completely different person. He might not have been raised on Earth like Goku, and he might have not had the same start to his life that Goku did, but he's changed. That past version of Vegeta, it's so far removed from him. This is a completely different Vegeta, and there's a reason he gets along so well with Goku. Just like how Goku can affect everyone around him in good ways, Vegeta does the same here. And most importantly, the two are affecting each other. They're rivals. They're best friends. They're both powerful pure Saiyans, able to combine their powers effectively against any threat, figuratively and literally combining themselves. Vegeta's grown as a completely different person, and Goku too, growing up with Vegeta's influence. Even if he hasn't changed as much, there still is a pretty clear shift in the story. All this from one little change, Vegeta taking a blow to his head, just like Goku did. All that completely altered the story, and their lives will continue going that way going forward. But there's still one thing that Vegeta's forgotten to do this entire time. They already found another Saiyan, so why not finally take the time to seek out Tarbo? And after all these decades have passed, Vegeta finally meets his long lost brother. Even with all these arcs having ended, it looks like Vegeta still has a lot to catch up on. Who knows what the future holds for him. This is where we'll end off for now. What'd you guys think about this part and the series as a whole? Considering the concept is for an April Fool scenario, I really like how this one turned out. And while we did speed up things at the end, their impact wasn't too huge. Maybe we could explore the story further someday. Possibly even going into GT. Let me know what you think below. As usual, be sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel and shows me you want to see more like this. Thank you all for watching, thanks for supporting the series all the way through, and I'll see you all in my next video.